Police continue to investigate the murder of a Suitland High School student who was gunned down over the weekend. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us. Well, Prince George's police need your help solving the case of a 15-year-old boy who was shot dead in Hillcrest Heights yesterday. The incident happened about 4.20 p.m. in the 4100 block of 28th Avenue. When police arrived, they found Charles Walker Jr. suffering from a gunshot wound just, or just footsteps away from his home. He was rushed to a nearby hospital where he later died. Walker's brother cried out this afternoon as he paced the scene. Another relative also expressed frustration and grief. Police are expected to give an update on the case within the hour. Well, it is day one in the trial of 29-year-old Jason Scott, who was charged with killing a Largo mother and daughter back in 2009. The prosecution showed gruesome photos of the charred bodies of Ebony and Dolores DeWitt as Scott looked on. Denise Douglas has the details from the courthouse. The charred bodies of Dolores and Ebony DeWitt were unrecognizable in the pictures that were shown today in court as the prosecution began laying out its case against Jason Scott. It was the first time that we saw that, also the first time that we saw the car that was on fire. We saw that from dash cam video from the officer's car who responded to the incident. Now, once that fire was put out, one of the bodies was found in the trunk, the other found in the back seat, that car had been stolen from a neighbor who lived close to the DeWitts. Scott is charged with killing the mother and daughter in 2009. In opening statements, the prosecution described how he searched for his victims using a computer database at the UPS office where he worked, going on to say that the evidence throughout this trial will connect like a neon arrow to Scott as the murderer. Now, Scott's attorney acknowledged the horrible nature of the crime, but asked members of the jury to set aside their emotions and conduct an analysis. He says a fair analysis of the evidence and decide who killed the DeWitts. Now, outside of this case, Scott is also considered a suspect in two other cases, though he's not charged, including that of another mother and daughter shot in their Largo home back in 2009. This case is expected to last four to six weeks. The prosecution alone has 60 witnesses. One final note, the case got a little bit of a late start this morning because one of the witnesses related to the DeWitts was so overcome by the idea of testifying in the case that she tried to commit suicide. So the prosecution had to reshuffle its witnesses. At this point, there's no set date or clear idea on when that witness might take the stand. I'm Denise Douglas in Upper Marlboro. CTV News. And Scott is already serving 100 years for a series of burglaries and home invasions. He was convicted of those crimes last year. Well, sequestration is coming. That's the warning from leaders from Prince George's, Montgomery, and Howard counties. Unless Congress can strike a deal before the March 1st deadline, severe arbitrary budget cuts will take effect, resulting in furloughs as well as lost tax revenue, jobs, federal aid, and contracts. Officials in Maryland say the impact will devastate local governments and greatly affect the day-to-day -day life of its residents. Rochelle Metzger is in Rockville with the details. As Congress continues to battle over budget issues on Capitol Hill, local leaders here in Maryland say the lingering uncertainty of sequestration is leaving local governments in limbo. And today, county executives from Montgomery, Prince George's, and Howard counties gathered in Rockville, urging Congress to act in informing the public about the devastating consequences sequestration could have on local communities. Get a deal done. That's the call from local officials and business leaders. In 10 days, a series of deep automatic across the board budget cuts will take effect, threatening to plunge fragile local economies back into financial crisis if Congress doesn't act. I don't want to wait a month or two from now after people are laid off, after business has suffered, after our security is impacted, after our defense is impacted, then say, oh, we had a problem we should have acted a month or so ago. We need to act now. The sequestration is nothing less than an assault on small business. Maryland is home to 130,000 federal workers who could see their salaries cut 20 percent by furloughs. Thousands of federal contractors stand to lose their jobs. Vital funding for transportation safety and defense projects slashed. This new report that directly connects cyber hacking to uh, the Chinese military, could this really be a time when we're going to cut back uh, the work that's done at Fort Meade. 
In Prince George's, $14 billion in annual federal spending would be affected, $5 million in federal education aid lost. County Executive Rashern Baker says the uncertainty prevents him from making decisions at the local level. Certainly the amount of money that we will give to the schools. I mean, there's only a limited amount of money that we have. They've got to make decisions on how they deal with Title I and other programs that are federally funded. Um, housing, uh, contracts for our businesses. With the livelihoods of residents and the future of small businesses at stake, the county executives are calling on Congress to find compromise before it's too late. I don't think we have to wait until the car actually goes off the cliff to know that it's a dangerous proposition. In addition to today's press conference, Ullman, Baker and Leggett will be rallying all the Maryland County executives and meeting with the congressional delegation to put pressure on Congress to find a balanced resolution to the country's budget woes. In Rockville, I'm Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. Meanwhile, President Barack Obama echoed similar concerns this morning in Washington. The president appealed to Congress to find a balanced solution to avert the severe cuts, which he says will hurt economic growth and threaten military readiness. Obama delivered the speech surrounded by local first responders, just some of the hundreds of thousands of Americans he says will lose their jobs unless lawmakers act. I believe such a balanced approach that combines tax reform with some additional spending reforms done in a smart, thoughtful way is the best way to finish the job of deficit reduction and avoid these cuts once and for all that could hurt our economy, slow our recovery, put people out of work. And most Americans agree with me. The president says Congress has the power to stop the cuts from happening. He noted that both the House and Senate are working on budgets and suggested that if lawmakers cannot agree on a broad budget plan by next Friday, they'll consider passing a smaller temporary package instead. A local fire official was on hand as the president made these sequestration remarks. Lieutenant Brandon Goff was one of a few Prince George's firefighters who got an invitation to the White House. Goff says that if public safety takes a hit, it could lead to longer response times in emergencies.